Hello everybody, I'm standing next to CFM 56-5B which belonged to Airbus A320 and today I would like to tell you a little bit about VBV actuators or variable bleed valve actuators. So let's take a look at it. First, let me explain why we need to have variable bleed valves. This engine, like many others, have inside two shafts. First one is called N1 and it connects fan low pressure compressor and low pressure turbine. The other is called N2 and connects high pressure compressor and high pressure turbine. And in between, we can find combustion chamber. But today I would like to focus only on compressor section. What is compressor good for? Well, low pressure compressor is responsible for pre-compression of the air, while high pressure compressor is here to handle main compression. This compressed air is then sprayed together with the fuel into the combustion chamber where this mixture is ignited by igniter plug. And if you want to know how ignition works, click on the link above or later you can find the link in the description below for the video which I already made about this topic. During idle operation or fast deceleration, low pressure compressor can creates such amount of the compressed air which high pressure compressor is not able to process and engine can enter into stall condition which can end up with a pressure release to the back of the engine or to the front which you as a passenger can feel, hear and even see because such a quick pressure release can end up with the flames coming out of the back of the engine or front of the engine together with loud bang and this will follow up by vibrations. Engineers of course trying to avoid such an event and they create several protections and VBV is one of those. Uh, and now we get to the point how it works. These valves are installed in between low pressure compressor and high pressure compressor and during fast deceleration or low speed operation these valves can open and they can release pressure out of the compressor section. Now we know the function, so let's take a look a little bit closer on the system on CFM 56-5B. On this engine we have 11 ball screw actuators, one master actuator and they are interconnected together with flexible shaft and all these valves are driven by fuel motor. And yes, before we inject fuel into combustion chamber, we are using it as a hydraulic fluid for motors which control variable bleed valves, variable stator veins, active clearance control for low pressure compressor and high pressure compressor, and active clearance control start bleed valve. These motors are pressurized by HMU, which is controlled by EEC. But again, I will focus only on variable bleed valves. How EEC knows in which position these valves are? It gets information from position sensor, which is interconnected with the master ball screw actuator through the push-pull feedback rod. This way EEC can modulate position of the valves to increase efficiency of the engine and prevent stall condition. Now you know all about functions and I would like to show you how to replace one of these actuators. So let's take a look at it. Each VBV actuator is covered by fan duct panel and it's very easy to remove it, it holds only on 4 bolts. And since panel is out I can proceed with the removal of the flexible shaft. It's holding position by spring so all what I need to do is push it clockwise into the valve below which will disengage it from the valve which I need to remove and after that I just need to pull it out from the strut. As a next step I can proceed with the removal of the actuator itself. There is no big science behind this as well. It's hold on position by four captive bolts. Two of them are installed horizontally and the other two are installed vertically. All what you need for this job is a Allen key. Horizontal bolts were loosed, now I can continue with the vertical ones.
Before I start with replacement of this valve, I set the whole system into closed position. It's really easy to do that. All what you need is a VBV manual control wrench. And then you insert this wrench into the last valve in the loop and start the rotating with it. That movement will be transferred through the flexible shaft into the other valves of the system. It is that easy. As you can see, valve is out and we can slowly proceed with the installation of the new one. But before, let's take a closer look on the valve itself. It is a very simple device. Inside we can find bevel gears, which transfer rotation from the flexible shaft on the screw, on which we have a nut with a valve flap attached to it. This rotation moves the nut along the screw axis, which will result in opening and closing of the valve. Here we have a new valve. As you can see, bolts are attached to it, so you don't need to be afraid that they will fall out. Valve is again preset to almost to close position, but of course after installation I need to set it to reference close position, but you will see that on the end of the video. Yes. Master. Master is different. At the moment we are replacing two actuators. I'm taking care of this one and my colleague on the other side is replacing master ball screw actuator. It's a bit different because that one control all the other actuators and getting input from the motor about which we've been talking about before. Horizontal bolts are on a place, now I can focus on vertical bolts and after that I will torque them with the torque wrench. Last screw was tightened and now I can proceed with adjustment of the actuator. And for that I need a special gauge which will fit into the doors of the actuator. And only when the doors are properly closed, the yoke of the tool will engage with the socket of the flexible shaft. As you can see it was necessary to adjust actuator a bit, but now as you can see the yoke of the gauge engage with the socket of the flexible shaft, which means that we reach a reference close position. Since actuator is set, we can install flexible shaft and then we can remove gauge which we use for adjustment. All what's remaining is lubrication, but you need to be really sure how much grams of grease comes out of your grease gun by each press, because inside of the valve you can inject only a okay. few grams, but exact amount you will find in your AMM. And after lubrication don't forget to clean remaining grease. After lubrication we need to cycle the whole system from close to open position several times. Then we can install Fantac panels and perform the test. After this replacement we need to perform FADEC test with engine motoring. And what does it mean? FADEC will perform dry motoring, during which it will check movement of several components like variable bleed valves, variable stator veins, active clearance control valves and don't forget it's crank so engine will gonna spin so you need to have somebody near to the engine who will inspect the area to avoid injury or damage to the equipment because safety first as always and as you can see 
test the techno faults, which means everything is okay and I need to set mass deliver to off position. And all that's remaining is to return aircraft to serviceable conditions, which means closing the sea ducts and of course fan calls. This is all about VBV system. If you have any questions, please write them down in the comments below. As always, I would like to ask you to don't use this as a maintenance manual. Always use documentation released by manufacturer. Thank you for your time. My name is Tomáš. This was Aircraft Maintenance with Zeto. And I will see you next one. Bye.